Hi, I'm Woody Huffines, and I own the Nerds to Go in McKinney, Texas, and this is Tech for the Untechnical. So, all this IoT security things, how does a hack really work if it's not just a password hack? We've talked in a number of videos about how you need to keep secure passwords and you need to change default passwords, but if you've done all that, is there a way that the hardware itself can cause you a problem? And this week, the Philips Hue light bulbs have had a proof of concept attack and we'll kind of walk through how without your password or your network login, how do people hack into a system? And in this case, how do they do it using the Philips Hue light bulbs? Remember when we've talked about internet security, the more threat surfaces that you have or the more pieces of hardware that you have or the more pieces of software that you're having in a security environment, the more that you have, the more threat vectors or the more attack surfaces or the greater your risk is. Think of it this way. If you built a brick house that only had one door, the front door, no windows, no garage door, no nothing, it'd be a lot easier to secure that than it is to secure a house that has front door, back door, windows, garage door, all this other stuff. And the same thing's true of a computer network. The more pieces of hardware that you have in the network, the more places that somebody has to hack. So this week, some security researchers have published a, what's called a proof of concept about how a bad guy can get into your home network through your Philips Hue light bulbs. Now, going back to the idea, the more things that you have on the network, the less secure the network probably is. And the way that the Philips light bulbs work is that the light bulb talks to a hub, which then talks to the network. So instead of the network dealing directly with the light bulb, it goes through the hub to get to the light bulb. So the light bulb is communicating with the hub using the Zigbee communications process, and then the hub is communicating with your home network through an internet or internet protocol process. So the proof of concept is that the bad guy hacks the light bulb over the Zigbee communication, and then the light bulb infects the hub, and then the hub infects the network. So why does that work? Well, anytime you have a computer, there's, called, there's things called their memory stacks. And it's, think of it like a deck of cards. And you push things and you pop things and you put memory in and you take memory out. And if you get lost in the programming about how you're doing that, it creates a memory fault. It could be a buffer overrun or a stack overrun. And then while the computer is not completely shut down or the device is not completely shut down, you can inject malicious code into the memory and have it execute that code. And this is what this hack does. After they've gotten through the Zigbee communication process into your light bulb, they cause a buffer overrun in the light bulb. So the light bulb then has a brain cramp and it takes it offline from the hub. So when you open your application, it says, hey, the bedroom light bulb is not, con not connected with the hub. It's unrecognized. Well, it's unrecognized because somebody has put some bad code in that light bulb. So the application prompts you to reconnect the not light bulb to the hub. Well, when you reconnect the light bulb to the hub, the malware, the bad stuff that's in the light bulb now gets to the hub and it executes code on the hub because the hub trusts the light bulb. So the light bulb puts the bad code in the hub. Now the bad code is in your IP address on the network and then it infects from the hub back to your network and Bob's your uncle. The bad guys have gotten into your network by hacking a single light bulb. Internet of Things security, ain't it great? And this is one of the issues that we always have in security is the concept of what's called security by obscurity. In other words, if nobody knows something's out there, then nobody's going to find it. If you hide something, if you hide it well enough, nobody will use that exploit against you. And that has proven not to be true for as long as there have been computers. And that causes a misconception with users that if somebody's got to have a computer and they got to have an antenna and they got to hack the Zigbee light bulb, which to hack the this, to hack, and there's this chain of events that has to happen, I'm probably safe. And, and we think that we're safe because in the movies and on television, the internet hackers are different in the movies than they are reality. I know, big surprise, movies and television aren't exactly accurate. So if we watch a movie, the computer genius is a chubby, socially awkward guy that just happens to be best friends with Brad Pitt and they're going to hack the evil casino boss's computers to steal a bunch of money from him. 
Or it's some Ukrainian dude in some industrial park with a bunch of blue lights and monitors that are wall to wall that's trying to launch our nuclear weapons against us. So we tend to think of hackers or people who are doing these bad things as masterminds. And they're really not generally masterminds. Generally, they have more in common with muggers than they do masterminds. If a mugger catches you on the street, he's hoping that you have a Rolex. If you have a Timex, he'll take it. When a hacker is trying to hack networks, he's looking for Chase Bank. But if he gets your home or your small business, he'll take it. He'll take your tax returns. He'll take whatever he can get. So when you have some kind of vulnerability, like this Hue vulnerability, it doesn't take long before the code is out there and instructions are out there so that the kid next door can mess around and try to hack everybody's Hue light bulbs in the neighborhood and then sell the information that he has on the dark web. This is just an example of how something as simple as a light bulb and some missed programming in a light bulb can then walk through the chain to get you back from the light bulb to your internet protocol, here's a video on internet protocol, into your network and possibly into your computer. This is why Internet of Things devices are so insecure and this is why they're so dangerous because there's a whole lot of them out there. Saw a statistic today that said there are 27 Internet of Things devices connected to the internet every second in the United States. And until we get this security right, getting them hooked up means that you need to take some precautions to make sure that you don't get hacked. And here's the whole list of the, the playlist that we've talked about about the Internet of Things devices, about how to secure your network and how to pay attention to your app and make sure that your stuff is updated. If you have any questions, give us a call or give us a comment in the comments below and ask any questions we might have and we'll come back and answer them for you. I'm Woody Huffines. I own the Nerds to Go in McKinney in Frisco, Texas. This has been Tech for the Untechnical. Hit the subscribe button, mash the like button, share this with your friends. We'd sure appreciate it.